All right, we're removing the, the new Zenit suspension. Some people love it, some people don't. Everybody has an opinion. Some people like the steel bungee by Viking. Some people like the Zenit suspension. Uh, I guess this came with the airplane that this customer bought and he rather would rather not have the rubbers and the washers and would rather have a steel spring. So, like I said, one's not better than the other. Everybody has an opinion on what they want. We, we undrilled some rivets on the sides here and here, and we took this metal piece out of there, this, this piece here. That's, that's the support. Uh, the airplane was originally not designed to take the support here for the whole airplane, the spring. So an add-on was put in here to help support that. The steel bungee actually brings the support down here where uh, the, it was originally designed to be held. That's where all the strength is. So that, that's the way we do it. So we took that out, we put some rivets back in there and removed the original setup. Now, with the original setup, uh, what has happened is when they went away from the steel bungee, there was no longer a tube here, uh, 23 and a quarter inches from the center of this tube up to here. There used to be a tube that went right through and it would stick out on this side and it would stick out on the back. And that was where you would loop your bungee around to make all that work. The bungee would go around that and it would go down and it would go around this, which is why I'm saying this is the original location for where the, um, the force was transferred before. And it's also the location where the steel bungee uh, picks up the force through these two uh, items, the straps on the side. We installed this heavy duty 5H tube and we drilled for a cotter pin on this side and for the other side. So that locks that in and we install these straps at the same time as we did that. We also got our top saddle. And in fact, prior to installing all this, we put a hole saw in here or anything round and we wound some tape in it because this diameter is smaller than this diameter. So we just needed something that would center that on that hole in here uh, on this hole so that when so that it would be in the original location so that we could drill a hole through here and a hole through here we started with the 5 16s hole which is a nice guide from here the outer ones for the 750 and the super duty and the inner ones for the 701 and then once we had holes we removed this and we brought the holes up to 3 8 just to have a little bit of room for these to float just a, a tad. Next thing we're going to do is get our gear leg ready. So I'm going to take the steel bungee and I'm going to make sure the gear leg is in the right direction, meaning uh, you want these going uh, kind of like straight up when the, when the gear leg leans back the same as the firewall. So then these come straight up. You'll be able to tell because these won't fit if you put the gear leg the other way and these are leaning. Also, when you look at the fork, the slant of the fork is in the front. So, we're going to, we usually, when you don't have this tube, we supply a tube and you drill it and cotter pin it on the front and on the back like we did here. However, since we have a welder about three feet away, I just quickly welded it on both sides so that it's in there permanently and it doesn't stick out. Now this has a, this is the bottom saddle. It has a groove in it, as you can see, and that fits on top of that 5H tube that's down inside there. So right here, it's not on the groove and I rotate it and it drops onto the groove. And then the spring goes on that. And then now we're gonna install the gear leg to the fuselage and put these screws back in to the belly of the airplane. And once that's done, um, we're going to show how to install the top saddle and so forth. All right, to continue on. So now let's just say the nose wheel is installed to this point. Uh, this makes it a little bit harder to install it. You can trim this back a little bit or you can just kind of hold this forward. So let's try it without trimming anything. We're gonna put a washer down on there. That's what the spring's going to sit on. And then that can go down inside. You want to rotate it, like we said, until it sits on this tube right there. And the spring goes in. 
and it just goes inside the tube and then it hits this so you can just bend the spring slightly as you move it down. You can also at the same time kind of hold this up here and feed it in all at the same time. That's another way so that this is all the way down then you can hang on to this end of it and then if you bring it all down together it might be easier to hold it away from the from the, from the sheet metal. So right now we're past the sheet metal and again make sure it actually sits on the on the uh, tube down here like it dropped in right there. Now on the top saddle we're going to have the same thing. We're going to have a um, Teflon washer in there or nylon washer <clears throat> and then it's ready to go on to the center here and then also line up with the side straps right there. If you do have an issue with the powder coat here being a little thick, you can sand a little bit on the powder coat for it to drop down onto the spring. In the middle, this thing just kind of takes some of the noise off. It's a little tough, tough um, felt washer when it, in the rebound of the spring. And then a uh, big washer goes on that. And then you can put a little blue Loctite on one of these. And that's gonna be our tension we'll see when we're all done we might actually put a little spacer in here we're going to play with that when we're done here we're going to show how to actually set the tension of the whole system and then you know you're going to be pushing this down just enough that you can and sometimes you can just take a couple of people holding it down or you can tighten the center one down which is what i like to do you just tighten that at least for the initial assembly you tighten this down enough that you can put a washer and a coupling nut on the side here washer and then this and then of course your safety wire hole will go on to the top all right let's get a wrench so we can tighten that down all right yeah so just for assembly tighten the middle one just enough that you can put the washers on and then uh, get the coupling nuts uh, started safety hole safety wire hole goes to the top and now what we got to do is, you know, if we had an engine in here and all that, we pretty much going to stop with the assembly until we have an engine in here. And then we're going to tighten this one and this one enough. You can pretty much kind of start out by tightening it so you just have a little bit of rod left, just enough that you can get the safety wire in and then safety this one to this one. Uh, because in 90% of the cases, that's going to be the, the, where you want to be as far as how much you're going to tighten this. The idea is that when you drop the nose on the, pa on the pavement with the engine in there, you want the uh, nose wheel to go up into this V-groove. If this bar is like way up here, that means that the spring is not tight enough to push the nose gear down into the V-groove. And see right now, with no weight, of course, it's working just fine. So, so you would stop right here, um, and then, uh, but we're just going to assume that we're going to tighten these all the way down with with an eighth of an inch left on each side, and then we're going to safety this to this. Like I said, eighty percent or ninety percent of the cases, that's all it is, and then we'll show you how to tighten the or set the tension on the um, on the middle, the preload. All right, so I got this safety. I got these screwed down. Like I said, it's almost so you can't get the wire through. And I put a little bow in the wire so it doesn't interfere with the middle because the middle does move up and down. And I'm kind of done with that now. Um, looks like I have a lot of thread here. I don't want to use all that thread. I want to be able to use it to actually adjust stuff. Uh, luckily, uh, I have a whole bag of these little spacers. Uh, that's a great thing to pick up at an air show, by the way, in the fly marts and stuff. You use it all the time. And I got one of those. I'm going to put a washer on here. And then I'm going to grab one of my spacers. Just, or you can just cut it out of a little piece of tubing so you get about what you want. I'm going to put another washer on there just to have something for the nut to go on. And then I'm going to put a little blue Loctite so it doesn't spin them by itself. And... <clears throat> this is now going to become our adjustment for how heavy or how light we want the rudder pedals to be when we sit in the airplane. And let me explain how that goes. Uh, 
basically I'm gonna tighten this a little bit. All right, so now I got it right there. Now I'm gonna go down here to the bottom and I'm gonna grab this with my hands, the whole the whole wheel. I'm gonna see how, how hard it is to turn it and see if this goes back to center. Um, I'm not 100% sure that I want it so tight that it'll go back to center because it kind of will anyhow. But I also don't want it too tight because I have to push the rudder and the nose wheel when I'm flying. And that can become a headache. So what I want to do is keep tightening this until that gets lighter down here. Now at some point, the whole nose wheel, see? The whole leg gets loose in there. Up and down, see how that's going up and down? Well, that's obviously the spring is now physically too short because we shorten the spring by tightening that. We don't want that. So we're gonna back off now just enough that the whole gear leg doesn't do that, like right there. And then, so now that's where I would leave it. I don't have any plate up and down. Maybe a tiny bit. I'm gonna go one more like that. I'm gonna leave it right there. Now it's as light as it can be, and there's no up and down plate. So it's sized properly between here and here, and it rotates just perfectly. So if I crank it down anymore, it makes it lighter. If I back it up, it makes it harder on the steering in the airplane.